Well, now we are ready to make these measurements. What I am going to do now is also briefly explain how we are going to use the oscilloscopes. Always remember to do any electronic test with protective glasses and with well insulated shoes. We have to connect or energize this in a circuit that has fuses. Remember that is very important. We are going to load it. And once we have our circuit energized, we will be turning it on. And we are going to make our first measurement with a multimeter, by the way. Also, for those who do not know how to use the multimeter, we will also be practicing. First, we are going to measure the AC current. We measure it on this side. At the input, and we are effectively finding 213 volts. Now we are going to change DC, and we are going to measure at the output. At the exit, we have 296. Note that we did not have 220. We had 213, a little less. And at the exit, we have 296. This is because at the entrance there are fewer. That is why we do not find 310. And also because the capacitor may be a little discharged, and we are going to corroborate that. We are going to corroborate these numbers with the calculator. So, if we had 220 volts, we had to have 310. But since we had a little less, 213, we would have to have 300 and a little discharge the capacitor. And that's fine, we are correct. We are having here now 298 volts, it is very good. There is nothing that raises the voltage. What we have is a rectification and filtering that it allows our attention to drop to zero. Now we will see this with the oscilloscope. Oscilloscopes have a test lead that is different from a multimeter. These oscilloscopes have no polarity. I can put them negative or positive without getting damaged. They don't have polarity, it's battery powered. So we have it set up, then I am going to explain step by step how it is used and what each function is for, but the most important thing I want you to memorize is that if you are going to measure voltages of more than 30 volts, remember to switch it to 10x, because in this case, I activate a resistor in here so that the full voltage does not reach the oscilloscope, that is the most important thing so that it does not burn. When they do that switching, they also have to notify the multimeter. Notice that here, it has a button in which we are going to notify it, that we are going to change it to 10x. Remembering that is the most important thing. We are going to measure alternating current first. We then place it, and we are going to measure the alternating current input, and we find, sorry, it was not seen now, and we find here, I am going to take it out and put it back to see again. And there we find the sine wave. Notice the values, pay attention. Peak voltage 308, 312, peak to peak voltage 612, 620. RMS voltage, which is what until now you knew that there was tension, almost 220. Okay, now it has risen a little bit. See, these are the voltages that you already know, 220 and 50 hertz. But there are also these voltages that we now have to know for electronics. They are in the line, they are in the voltage, but only an oscilloscope shows us what happens through time, it can show us. So now we are going to measure the direct current at the output of the capacitor. We control after the capacitor and see what we find. With a line, simply with a line, zero of frequency, 300 RMS and 300 peak voltage is nothing else 
It's just a line, and that's it. This is what direct current is. Simply electrons entering from one side. Zero frequency. Here you are seeing how this rectification is produced. Now we will talk about the fifth diode. 